The 2019 season is in full swing, and in Chapel Hill, we have a pivotal EAGL interconference match between the North Carolina Tar Heels and the NC State Wolfpack right here on ESPN3. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Carmichael Arena. Fans have come both in light blue and red to see the Tar Heels and the Wolfpack compete. And Christina, these two teams over the first three weeks have really competed well. As you look at the EAGL standings, the team averages the difference two tenths of a point. That's right, Brian. And you know what? It's always an exciting meet between Carolina and State. NC State, the returning EAGL champions from 2018. The head coach for the North Carolina Tar Heels in his 38th year is Derek Galvin. He had to be really pleased with how they performed last week against Oklahoma. Five-time EAGL champion and coach of the year. More than half of the routines had score increases. That's right, and they increased their team score by a point over their opening weekend. Meanwhile, for NC State, on the other hand, you got head coach Kim Landris in her second season as head coach of the Wolfpack. She was a bright sensation for the Wolfpack in her first year, as you see, winning the EAGL championship and was the Southeast Region Coach of the Year. She was phenomenal for the Wolfpack. She really couldn't have asked for a better start season with uh, NC State last year, finishing ranked 20th, which is a really high uh, final ranking for them. And as we get ready for the first rotations, North Carolina will be on vault and North NC State will be on the uneven bars. This was one of three uh, rotations that the Wolfpack improved on in their quad meet last week up in Towson, Maryland. You see uh, Drew Grantham. She's going to be a key component as well as Maggie Tamburo. Maggie Tamburo got her career high last week, had a 9-9. They did struggle on beam last week, so that's going to be a really critical event for them tonight. You also have Caitlin Fillard as well as Lauren Ken at the back end. So far, NC State has gotten three of the EAGL Gymnasts of the Week weekly awards. Meanwhile, for Carolina on vault, as you see them going through their four-minute touch warm-up, the lineup for North Carolina, pretty much the same. A little bit of changes in who starts. Drew Aldrich, the young freshman, will start things off. But you've got Kaja Hislop at the end, who is, was a first-team All-AGL performer on vault last year. That's right, and this is going to be a really critical event for the Tar Heels. They have had good performances on vault, but haven't been honing in on those landings and have lost some tents there. Yeah, coming into this week's weekend's matches, the North Carolina Tar Heels are 44th in the country on vault. Meanwhile, NC State has now creeped into the top 25 on bars. As we said, that score last week of just over 49 in their meet last week. Yeah, and so it's going to be really exciting because uh, the teams have different strengths, and I think that's going to be something interesting to see how do they do against each other and how do they perform on these different events where both teams have had some struggles early in the season. Well, last week, uh, I'm actually last year when the Tar Heels and the Wolfpack performed here at Carmichael, the margin of victory was just short of three-tenths of a point. And they also competed well against each other over in Raleigh at Reynolds Coliseum. That's right. And that's why I said, you know, we really are going to be focusing a lot on landings tonight because the Tar Heels have had a good start to the season. They haven't had to count any falls. The gymnasts have been hitting their routines. But certainly what I saw from them last week on vault were some lands that were a little bit out of control, some big steps back. And that's when you get into the two, three tenths deduction on landings. There you saw associate head coach Marie Case Denick. She's the lead coach. Uh, she's the associate head coach and lead coach for the Tar Heels on Fall as she's talking with Drew Aldrich, the young freshman out of Los Angeles, California. Set a personal best 9625 for Carolina in the vault last week against Oklahoma and Ball State. And so one of the things we're going to be, what we're going to be looking for on vault is a combination of the dynamics of the vault, the height, the distance, the landing, of course, and the form that they keep in the air. So Drew really needs to hone in on her landing. Yeah. And you see it there. And that was a much better vault than last week. You saw she got a huge distance and really controlled that landing, much smaller hop than last week. The freshman getting things going for the Tar Heels, and as the judges tabulate the scores here, so you see her getting hugs from all her teammates. We get another young freshman 
uh, for the Wolfpack. It's a uh, Meredith Robinson, freshman out of Huntersville, North Carolina. She's done very well in terms of state competitions. In 2017, uh, she was first in all around at the level 10 state championships. A nice Jaeger release move to open there. One of the things we're going to be talking about on bar, and nice pack Salta. One of the things we're going to be talking about on bars is those hands, hands a little shy in that pirouette. Every time the gymnast is short of being vertical on that handstand, they will incur a deduction. Gearing up for her dismount here. You see that full pirouette into the double back. Nice routine. Couple handstands that were a little short, so those will be deductions, but good start for NC State. As you get a look at Robinson going and, through her routine. And that's that release move, that Jaeger. She controlled that nicely. Here we're getting the end of that dismount. Good job, which just a little bit late on that pirouette. Needs to finish that uh, pirouette right in handstand, but strong start. Good start for the Tar Heels. 9.75 for Drew Aldrich, a season best, a great improvement. And now the grad student, Megan Ruzicka, who comes to Carolina from both Iowa and Northwestern. Wow. And you know what? That was a much better vault than she did last week. Last week we saw she really didn't get the block that she needed off the horse and came in real short. She still didn't quite get um, enough height and distance as you'd like to see. Had to pike down a little bit in the end. We'll see that on replay. Um, but she gets, you see, right there, her hip angle closed a little bit, but she had a great landing, big improvement from last week. Yeah, the grad student for Carolina out of Plainfield, Plainfield Illinois. And what an inspirational story she has. Transferred to Northwestern, competed level 10 while she was finishing at Northwestern, then came as a graduate student. Such a passion for the sport. And here's one of the stars for NC State, Drew Grantham. Junior out of Durham, North Carolina. Oh, and you know, I was just gonna say, she, it looked like she was lacking a little bit of amplitude on that Tkachev release move. And the gymnast now can re-chalk, has to remount the bar, and this is, an, this is a critical point. You can see right there, she, you know, she, it seemed like she got her hands around the bar, wasn't too far away. Um, but sometimes the grips aren't quite on top of the bar. They don't have the exact grip they want when they catch caused a fall, um, but this is early in the lineup. You never know what's going to happen later in the lineup, so it's important for these athletes to remount, continue their routine, and she's a seasoned athlete. She will be competing in all around, but I was also going to ask after that first pass, how much does elevation play into it going off those big moves? Well, um, the judges do expect to see um, a certain amount of height with those release moves, so she will have incurred a deduction for that as she's gearing up for her dismount here. Double layout, nice recovery, good mechanics in that double layout, but NC State will be looking to drop that score. And here you see that double layout again. Just a little bit of leg separation and that hop, um, but good to see her recover. As a reminder, six athletes up on each event, five count, so NC State can drop that score provided that the, the following gymnast hits. So now up next for Carolina is Alexis Allen, the junior out of Sparks, Nevada. She really peaked at the end of last year, setting a career best 9.85 on the vault. And really nice vault for Alexis. You know, she struggled a little bit with that landing. That's the Yurchenko Arabian with that half twist. Starts out of a 9.95, which is the same as the Yurchenko full twist. We'll get a second look on the replay. She gets good block, could have gotten a little bit more distance, but she really controlled that landing. She sat it down the first week, had it much better last week, and she looks like she's continuing to improve that. Yeah, Coach Galvin must be really happy with how this lineup has started for the Tar Heels. Yeah, and you know, they have been hitting these vaults. I think it's a good, they haven't been counting major mistakes. They've really just had to hone the landings. That's a much easier thing to deal with than not having the mechanics of the vault, and a lot of credit goes to um, Marie Case Denick, the uh, coach for vault there. So now we get ready for Caitlin Fillard, the senior out of Center Reach, New York. Nice transition there. And maybe just a little bit shy on that final handstand. A nice double layout to finish. Correction, that is Melissa Brooker, Jr. out of Charlotte, North Carolina. 
So halfway through the first rotation. And that was a critical routine for NC State to get back on track. As you get a look at Michaela Robinson, junior out of Chantilly, Virginia. And she's another one of those athletes we're going to want to see her hone that landing in here. Wow. Um, well, I, I don't know what the opposite of the commentator jinx is. I guess I set her up for that. Big improvement over last week. She had a bounding step back last week. She has really improved her block on this. Good height, good distance. That is a little hop in place, does not count as a stick. You can see her teammates are pretty stoked about that. The other thing is the landings are becoming contagious. That's right. That and that it that you know once your team you see your teammates start to stick those then or it have improved landings, it makes you want to do that too. And it's great to see them moving in that direction. Because as I mentioned, the bigger steps, those bigger lunges back, those can really rack up a lot of tens. So now we get set for Maggie Tamburo on uneven bars for the Wolf Pack. She set that career best 9.9 .9 last week. And she is a great bar swinger. As you mentioned, set that career high. Really nice extension. And another one of those Jaeger relief moves. Nice handstand and good handstand in that bail. She's really getting on top of all of these handstands, and it can be difficult to be aggressive because you don't want to go over as she's gearing up for her dismount. Oh, and you know what? She just needed to sink her heels in a little bit. Um, I think she tried to come up too quickly to salute, but that was really the only uh, error in her routine. Beautiful form throughout that routine. And now up for Carolina is the senior Madison Hargrave out of Westfield, Indiana. And she is a club teammate of legendary NCAA gymnast Bridget Sloan. And Alexis Allen before her got a 9-7. And really nice vault. She's improved so much throughout her career, is really getting more dynamic. Still probably needs to get a little bit more height um, on her block, but good control landing. She had a solid score last week with a 9.75. As you get another look here. Yeah, and you know, she just has to pike her hips down a little bit towards the end. We're looking for the gymnast to keep their body laid out the entire time. But again, another strong vault for uh, UNC. You're seeing those scores continue to um, improve. So here is Caitlin Fullard, who is fifth up for the Wolfpack, a senior out of Center Reach. New York, she made second team all at EAGL on the bars. And she's expected to be another all-around performer for the Wolfpack. And really nice to Kacha there. She's moving nicely through this routine, has good rhythm. Maybe just a little bit shy on that last handstand. She's gearing up for her double layout. Just shy, has to take that lunge forward. When you see gymnasts having to take the lunge forward like that, they will incur a bigger deduction. Really nice to Kachev here, though. That was the highlight of the routine for me. And she just didn't quite keep the shape, had to pike that down, but otherwise strong routine. You see the score for Carolina right now, 39 after five rotations as you see Kaja Hislop. Wow! Oh my gosh. And that is why they call her K-Money. That is her nickname and there is a reason for that. She, um, this is what we've been looking for. She came in a little bit short last week. That is how you do a Yurchenko full right there. Look at the height off the table. She's able to flare it out. No problem. That is a phenomenal way to cap off the rotation. It's going to be interesting to see what the judges do with that. That vault starts out of a 9.95 and Madison Hargrave before her got a 9.875. So now for NC State is Lauren Kent, sophomore out of Willow Springs, North Carolina. release move to the transition to low there. A nice 
dismount. She controlled that landing well, had a little bit of shape issues in the air. And when I say shape issues, what I mean is that she doesn't quite keep her body laid out the entire time. We'll take a second look here. Yeah, just has a little bit of pike throughout that, but the rest of the lineup really did their job. Had that adversity in the early in the lineup, the rest of the athletes hit their routines. We do have one exhibition performance left, and it's from the Wolfpack. It will be from sophomore Caitlin Cox. And sophomore at a few quick arena, but seeing Kaja Hislop there coming in with a 9-9, that's tying her career high. And you look at the back end of Carolina's vault line, if you see the score now confirmed 49.125, the back end. Michaela Robinson, Madison Hargrave, Kaja Hislop, career bests. That's right, and you know what? Every single one of these athletes improved from last week. That's really what we want to see, but you are right. That back of the lineup, those athletes really honing their power in and getting that stick getting those sticks, getting the better dynamics, getting all the distance um, to get some of those higher scores. So the sophomore Cox from Fuquay Verena going through her exhibition routine. And so just as a reminder, these exhibition routines, they are scored by the judges, but they don't contribute to the overall team total. So it's an opportunity for these athletes who aren't quite ready to be in the lineup to get their routines out there, get them scored. Really nice double lay out there. So she had a really great stretch position throughout that. So after one rotation, you see Carolina excellent on vault, 49.125. NC State recovered 48.825 as the teams will switch here on ESPN3. Back here at Carmichael Arena, the North Carolina Tar Heels with a three-tenths of a point lead after one rotation against the NC State Wolfpack here on ESPN3. Brian Ware along with Christina Chauvinet. And Christina, we mentioned how Drew Grantham has done really well the last couple weeks. Even though she took a fall, as you get a look at the scores, the team really recovered. That's right, and you know that's something that you really want to see those athletes in the later half of the lineup. A couple form issues here and there, but the athletes really did their job and hit their routines. Yeah, Meredith Robinson did really well, setting the best score of 9.8, but Melissa Brooker, Maggie Tamboro, and Lauren Kent all with 9.775s. Yeah, and that, that's a really strong start for uh, NC State, especially considering they had a fall in that two spot. Meanwhile, North Carolina really did well on the vault with that score of 49.125, specifically at the back end, as we mentioned during the last during the rotation. Michaela Robinson, Madison Hargrave, and Kaja Hislop setting personal bests, scores of close to 9-9 as you get a look at this highlight and package. This is, and this was such a great rotation for Carolina. Madison Hargrave, one of the most improved gymnasts on that event, just the tiniest of pike down there. And Kaja Hislop, I mean, this is vaulting 101. Look at how high she gets, just the teeniest tiny foot adjustment. I think that's probably why um, she got the 9-9. But man, she can really put that one into the rafters. So we will step aside for just a couple minutes as the Tar Heels and the Wolfpack get set for rotation number two here on ESPN3. Teams getting ready to start their second rotation here on ESPN3. NC State will be on vault. North Carolina will be on the uneven bars. And Christina, as we get a look at the Wolfpack lineup, key figures here will be the Phillips twins going fourth and fifth, as well as Grantham looking to recover from her bars performance. That's right, and one of the things that we're going to look for for NC State, they do currently have a couple of vaults that are only your Chenko layouts, no twists. Those vaults start from a 9.75. I know that the coaching staff told me they're working those all towards twisting vaults, so we'll see which ones they go for here. And coming up first will be the freshman Meredith Robinson, who had the best score for the Wolfpack on bars. And that's one of those Yurchenko layouts. She does a nice job, but again, as I mentioned, that vault starts out of a 9.75 compared to the twisting full twist, which is a 9.95. She does have a little bit of pike down there in her hips, um, and I know they're working their, them towards those full twists, probably just not feeling consistent enough right now, um, and they'll work that in later in the season. 
And now Carolina ready to perform on the uneven bars. You see the lineup beginning with Megan Ruzicka. You also have Michaela Williams and also Riley Dewhurst at the back. She set a personal best uh, on the uneven bars last week. And Megan has a great ginger that's coming up right here. Nicely done. Transitions back to the high bar. And she's gearing up for her dismount here. Struggled a little bit with it last week. Much better job. Just has that pop forward, but had a lot better swing. I think I can tell they're getting their endurance up a lot. And here's that ginger that I mentioned. Just a little bit of leg separation there right into her transition to the low bar. And now we're getting a look at that double layout. Again, just a little bit of shape in the air was piked through both of those uh, flips, but a lot better endurance compared to last week. Coming up now for the Wolfpack is Victoria Pratty. And that's a tucked full, so that starts out of a 9.9. .9. You can see she kept her legs tucked throughout that vault. And probably another one of those vaults that they're working towards um, that Yurchenko laid out full, but it, that starts from a 9.9, .9, so not so much difference between the tucked full and uh, the laid out full compared with just the layout. And just as you mentioned, they're trying to get rotations in. This is our first debut performance on the vault this year for the Wolfpack. Meanwhile, second up for the Tar Heels is Makayla Williams, the junior out of Warner Robins, Georgia. And Makayla also coming back from an off-season injury. Nice release move there. She struggled a little bit with her handstands last week. Better one there. Maybe a little bit shy on that bail to handstand, but overall I'm seeing a lot better swing and not coming up short of those handstands. Now I say that a little shy there as well. Gearing up for her dismount, another one of those that does a double layout. And that step forward, again, you know, that, that, that step forward is something that they're trying to hone to pick up on those extra half tens. Uh, but overall, nice job, an improvement from last week. You see she does that hop right into the release move. Nicely done. And getting a second look at her dismount here. Double layout, very popular dismount. And she's just a little short, has to take that step forward. That'll be a deduction. Caitlin Fullard is third up for the Wolfpack. She's been really consistent on vault the last two weeks, getting scores of 9.8, respectively. And there's that Yurchenko full that we saw from a lot of the Carolina lineup. She had good mechanics in the air, just that lunge back, and that will incur a deduction. And as we get that second look here, she gets a nice rise off the table, does have to pike down a little bit, take that big lunge back. Again, the size of the deduction is proportionate to the size of the step that you take. And in general, lunges back like she had will get a smaller deduction than a hop because uh, the uh, lunge shows a little bit more control. Drew Aldrich, the freshman, is now up for the Tar Heels. She set a season best on the vault just a moment ago, and she's done really well in her first two meets on the uneven bars. Saying a best of 9.675. And wow, I was a little bit worried that she was going to go over on that handstand, but she's being really aggressive here. Has that toe on into the double back. Wow, nice tuck landing there. As you see her gearing up for a dismount. Here's that toe on into the handstand. She has a nice final handstand into that double back. She really saw that landing, and you can see Derek Galvin is stoked about that one. Well, it's become infectious as now you see Paris Phillips, the senior from Athens, Georgia. She missed nearly all of last year with an injury and came back for the Wolfpack and performed at regionals, and she's a vault and floor specialist. Just a little shy there of her Yurchenko full. Again, starting out of that 9.95. We'll take another look at that on the replay. Little bit of bent arms that look like on that block. The block is so important because it really sets you up for the rest of the mechanics of the vault. She came in a little bit short, but managed to take a small hop and minimize the deduction. She was a second team vault, uh, all EAGL vault in 2017. As you get a look at Emery Summy. Freshman out of High Point, North Carolina. She 
was the one Tar Heel that took a fall last week against Oklahoma and Ball State, but she's done really well for the Tar Heels as a freshman, obviously uh, training at High Point Gymnastics Academy in the Triad area. Very interesting fact, she was actually born in China and was adopted as a child coming here to the U.S. And this is the element she fell on last week. Oh, and you know, she just didn't get the swing out of it. It has to end in a dead hang there. So she will incur a deduction for that. Recovers nicely, though. It can be really hard when you have a break like that in the rhythm to get swinging again. And she's gearing up here for her dismount into that double back. Nice job. You know, it looked like she might have been a little bit shy on the dismount, but she handled it well. Uh, will be a pretty significant deduction um, as we get a look at her dismount. Sh shy on that pirouette um, into the double back. When these gymnasts are doing the pirouetting elements, you want to see them finish the pirouette in handstand, and that is a really difficult thing to do, and it's a place we'll see a lot of gymnasts get deductions. Alexa Phillips, senior also from Athens, Georgia, was a first-team All-EAGL on vault last year for the Wolfpack and also vaulting one of those Yurchenko foals. Really nice, De the best one of the lineup so far. She had great mechanics throughout, looked like she really got a good block and was able to finish that twist before she came down. We get a second look at it here. And yeah, maybe just a little bit of a pike down, um, but really strong vault for NC State. Wolfpack's best performance so far for on vault as you Get set for the fifth performer for the Tar Heels, which will be uh, Grace Donahue. Out of Lake Oswego, Oregon, she set a best of 9.75. And in she, their first meet in D.C. And she has such beautiful toe point on this event. Love that release move. Nice handstand there. She struggled with this bail. You know, again, just a little bit shy and some leg separation. So that will be a deduction. But she's just such a beautiful bar swinger. You can really see her showing off her line, her toe point. Another one of those athletes doing the double layout. Just that step, but overall strong routine. Just that middle part of her uh, routine that she needs to clean up. But we're going to look at one of the highlights for me. She just keeps such great form. Look at that toe point. Love it. Love the artistry that she is bringing to this routine. We'll see that again on balance beam. Um, but double layout, leg separation, though the judges are sitting on the side, so sometimes they don't catch those leg separation mistakes. Drew Grantham is now up for the Wolfpack, looking to recover from a mistake on bars. And what a way for it. Wow, and that was definitely the um, most distance that any of the NC State athletes got on the vault. Huge dynamics in that vault. So we take a second look here. Yeah, you know, she really got a lot, just that hop on the uh, dismount. But when we're seeing it from this angle, yeah, maybe just a little bit of bent elbows on the block. And, um, but she got good, good rest of her rotation. She set a personal best last year with a score of 9-9. This is going to that's going to be a good 9-8. As you get a look at Riley Dewhurst who tied her personal best last week against number 1 Oklahoma. And she is a beautiful gymnast to watch on this event. Similar to Grace, just has great toe point, great lines. Maybe a little shy on that final handstand. As she gears up for her dismount. Wow. And you know what? She fought for that stick because it looked like she was a little bit off in her center of gravity. But really nice fight there. An overall good routine. And we're seeing here her transition. This is called a Maloney. Gymnasts are required to transition in between the high and low bars. And this double layout, probably the best we saw. I don't know, Carolina, I guess they just all love doing double layout. Seems like everybody's doing the double layout. But that was probably the best one um, that we saw from Carolina. So far, the Tar Heels have had three scores of 9-7-7-5. Dewhurst maybe a little bit better with that, with that last routine. Yeah, you know, it's going to be um, interesting to see uh, what the judges do with that. As you mentioned, did was their top performer last week as well. Um, and they will be looking, they, so they will be able to drop the mistake that came in the middle of the rotation. There is one exhibition performance 
from the Tar Heels, and it's from junior Emily White, who is a transfer from Iowa State. And she, she did an exhibition routine last week, did struggle on her release move, which is coming up right here. And good to see her catch that. Looked like she lost a little rhythm, yet yeah, really shy on that handstand. But she's moving through it. She is recovering from an off-season injury, so sometimes the endurance of the routines can get exhausting. But look at this. She does this alter element. So cool, beautiful to see into that double back. Nice, good job, much improved. You can see she's really excited about that. Really big improvement from last week. The teammates love whenever the in-exhibition performance sticks. And as you look at the scores, North Carolina has improved their lead. It's now half a point as we get ready for the third rotation on ESPN3. Halfway through this meet and the North Carolina Tar Heels doing really well in their first two rotations with a score of 98. Meanwhile, NC State is at 97.5 as the Tar Heels will move to beam and the Wolfpack will move to floor exercise here on ESPN3. Brian Ware along with Christina Chauvinet. And Christina, as you look at the Tar Heels scores, a very consistent uh, score line with Riley Dewhurst tying her personal best at the end for the for Carolina. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, Riley matched her season high at the at the anchor of that lineup. Good to see all of those scores really coming up uh, from last week. And you know, just a couple details to hone in there, but it's good to see Carolina continuing to make improvement from week to week. Meanwhile, the back end of NC State's lineup really did well. The Phillips twins and as well as Drew Grantham got them a pretty decent score, 48.675. The floor exercise, they really got to hone that as you get a look at some of the Wolfpack vaults. Yeah, and you know, some of those vaults are still working up their difficulty. So a really nice full here, good dynamics in the air, just that step back. And again, those the size of the deduction is proportional to the size of the step or the hop that you take. So really trying to see some of those gymnasts getting into midseason now, honing those landings. Just a little bit short there on that Yurchenko pull, but overall good rotation for NC State. So we will get set for the third rotation on the other side of this break, watching College Gymnastics here on ESPN3. North Carolina ready to compete on the balance beam here at Carmichael Arena, and one of the best gymnasts to ever do it over the last few years is Morgan Lane. She was third in school history on the balance beam, and last year she made it to nationals and competed in the all-around. A great uh, career for Morgan Lane. It was so great to see her make it to nationals. She's come so close in her sophomore and junior year, and she told me it was just really the like cherry on top of a wonderful career. And if you have not seen Morgan Lane's balance beam routine, I don't want to tell you to cut away from the broadcast now, but after the broadcast is over, go to YouTube, look up her routine. She's a Gymtronet fan favorite. You can see her there now as a volunteer assistant coach. Yeah, she's ready to get into medical school as well. And as we've said before, these Carolina gymnasts, they really do well both academically, athletically, and in the community. Today is Diversity Day. You get a look at the beam lineup, starting with Grace Donahue and Alexis Allen. And then you got Kaja Hislop, who is excellent in her own right. That's right. And Brian, you forgot, we also have the Rainbow Leotards. Most important part about diversity and inclusion meet, Leo Alert. I love this leotard. Um, yeah, but it's a, it's a really fun meet, and uh, we'll see. It's going to be uh, good to see this lineup as we look at um, Grace Donahue there opening for the Tar Heels. She had a little bit of a shaky performance last week, didn't have a fall, um, definitely fought through some elements that she was off on, but she can be better on that event. But you can see, I mean, look at this toe point. She really shows off the same lines that she has on uneven bars on balance beam. And she's gearing up here for her series. She does a back handspring layout step out. And just a little bit off there, but manages to minimize the deduction. And as you mentioned, fighting through it. And it's so important in that leadoff spot. And gets her head back there. A little bit of a slow connection in those dance elements. 
it is a requirement to connect uh, dance elements. That full turn there also a requirement on balance beam. And another thing to keep in mind is this year they did institute a uh, rhythm deduction. So if uh, the gymnast is pausing on the beam for too long, they will incur deduction. Oh, and I was just going to say that was one of the areas that she struggled on last week, just way too far off with her hips. If your hips are too far off to the side, even if your feet get on the beam, you really can't um, can't correct it. And just gearing up for her dismount here, she does a gainer pike off the end. Nice recovery. You know, just too bad about this aerial. She was working through the routine nicely. And you know, it looked like she was just maybe a little bit under rotated and had her whole center of gravity off there. Good dismount though, really honed in on that landing. So now <laughs> NC State will be performing on floor exercise and leading things off is Caitlin Fillard, the senior. And I'm really excited to see NC State's floor routines. They always have great choreography and are excellent performers. And there are a lot of NC State fans here as well that are getting into these, that are gonna get into these floor routines. She's been the one to set the table for the Wolf Pack. And she sets for her first tumble pass. Nice double pike to open there. quite a lot, but she managed to recover really well. And you get a look at her big tumbling passes. Double pike, really nice form in the air. We're gonna look for these gymnasts to take control lunges. And here's that double back, just a little bit short. You can see she's in a pretty deep squat, but manages to pull it out and um, minimize the deduction. So now up for Carolina on the balance beam is Alexis Allen. And you know, this is gonna be interesting for Alexis. She has struggled with consistency um, in the, her first couple years of uh, competition on beam, but so far this season has been really uh, consistent. And she is, she's is she got a great line on this event. And by when I say great line, what I mean is she's got great extension through her leaps, hits those 180 degrees in her uh, split leap elements, which is something that the judges are looking for. Um, and this is a really critical routine uh, for Carolina. Obviously the judges tabulating the first score from Grace Donahue after taking the fall. So that's why we have the slight delay, but Alexis Allen, she set a personal best, uh, actually season best uh, in the first meet of the year up in Washington DC with a 9775. And it was in early the year last year where she set her career best of 9.9 .9 in their dual meet against Temple. That's right, and she's so capable on this event. And she is just, she's become a lot more confident on balance beam, getting that full turn out of the way. And she's gearing up for her series here. Really nice. You know, she could, you could tell she was really confident in that landing. Sometimes when gymnasts are um, a little bit nervous, you can, you can see some hesitation, and that creates additional deductions that they wouldn't necessarily have. Good to see her be aggressive on that. 
and she really showed off the extension through that switch side. It is a requirement to connect to dance elements. And really nice aerial there. She's looked so confident throughout this routine. Just her dismount left. She does a cartwheel gainer. Wow. Great recovery routine for, for Carolina. And you can see she is stoked about that. And we get a look at her series here. This is a really common series in NCAA gymnastics. Look at that. She almost smiled when she came up from it. She knew she had it. And just so confident on all of her uh, elements, as you see, into the gainer there, sticks the dismount. That's going to be close to her career high. So second up for the Wolfpack will be Melissa Brooker, the junior out of Charlotte, North Carolina. And a lot of gymnasts on the Wolfpack from North Carolina, probably part of the reason why they have so many fans here. And just a little bit of additional power on that double back. Front layout to front full. She was a little bit under-rotated, did a great job to save that. What I was going to say is that final tumbling pass is going to be a very, that's where you see the athlete's endurance and see if sometimes in the early season athletes can sometimes struggle with it. Front layout there, you can see she's just a little under-rotated, again in that deep squat, but she really managed to save that well and really hot, good level of performance from these NC State athletes. I think it doesn't hurt that they brought a lot of fans with them. So it's, I'm not gonna say it's a whole meet, but it doesn't quite have the feel of an away meet for them. As you see Lily Dean here on the beam. And she's another one doing that back handspring layout step out. Oh, and again, just pretty far off on that element. She just looks a little bit rattled. Had got good extension on that leap, but just had to bobble. And unfortunately now, the Tar Heels will have to take a fall in one of their five scores. And just kind of, just looks like she's, again, pretty similar mistake to what happened in her series. We see her a lot on the on floor, staple of the floor lineup. Yeah, the third spot for North Carolina in terms of the rotation has switched between, well, last week it was McKenna Appleton that was on the beam for the Tar Heels. Lily Dean performed up in DC, had a score of 9-6, but. A nice recovery with that dismount. You know, it's just, just one of those things, it's just not her day. I don't think there's anything more or less to that. As you see here, just off, just way too far off. Once your hip angle gets off, again, really difficult to save. And yeah, you know, it just, she really is capable of doing a really, of doing a good beam reach. And I know she's been working hard on that this season, but that will mean that uh, Carolina is gonna count uh, the 9.050 from Grace Donahue. So now third up for the Wolfpack is Victoria Pratty. Sophomore out of Florida who mostly competed on floor last year for the Wolfpack.
a little bit shy of split in that first element. I think for NC State, obviously they're having a little bit of trouble with the landings, but I'm really impressed with the fight that they're doing because it would have been very easy um, to sit them down, but they have been fighting through it, minimizing the deduction, double back, look at that. You know, she, I don't, I didn't see a flag, don't think she went out of bounds, came really close. Here, that front layout, just way under rotated, but she manages to turn it into a lunge. Um, so good to see them fighting through that. So after Carolina has taken two falls in their first three gymnasts in the lineup, what better way than to get one of your better gymnasts up in Kaja Hislop? Yeah, and, and Kaja is so great to watch on this event for the same reason she is on floor. You see that aerial to back handspring her series there. She tied her personal best with that 9-9 vault earlier. And at the end of last year, she also set a personal best of 9.925 in the dual meet against Pitt. Yeah, and you know, she, she is one of those athletes that can't, she shows off her power so nicely and her extension. Look at the extension on those 180 degree elements, often getting beyond 180 degrees. She has done a couple of different dismounts. Um, she is going to be doing her aerial to full dismount as she works through her full turn there. and didn't quite stick the dismount last week. And this is one of those areas she might incur a pause deduction. Little pause there, really, and you know what? She was a little bit far off, does manage to hold on to that stick, but that is an area where you see that hesitation that she might incur a deduction. And look, this is the beat jump to that double stag. Very rare to see that double stag jump in NCAA gymnastics, and she does it so well. And here's that aerial to full. Looks like her back heel was a little bit off, but she managed to um, complete it, no problem. And they needed that recovery. That's absolutely right. And as you get a look at Alexa Phillips, she'll be first up of the Phillips twins out of at Athens, Georgia. And Alexa last year was also first team all EAGL on floor exercise. And you know, I think it's interesting, both their events, the twins go back to back. So I don't that's just a twin thing, I guess. They need to um, go back to back. And that is the wolf pack howl um, that you hear at the start of all their floor routines. Uh, last week we had Ball State with the chirp, and we have um, the wolf pack here this week. And look at that. Oh, you know what, she, a little bit of a full landing, but that Arabian double front, so difficult. And we were talking beforehand how that's an E-pass. That's right, the, and that's the most difficult classification of pass in NCAA gymnastics, A being the easiest, E being the hardest. Nice one and a half to front layout there. Best routine so far for the Wolfpack from Alexa Phillips. Yeah, and you know, we're gonna take a look at her Arabian double front here. Again, one of those E passes in NCAA gymnastics. You know, she was just, she was, had ended up where you could see it. She was like, oh dear. But um, you know what, managed to save the landing. I'm really impressed with um, how these athletes, obviously they've been prepared and training to deal with adversity in their landing and ended really nicely there with that Rudy. 
So fifth up for North Carolina on beam is Riley Dewhurst, who tied her personal best on bars just a moment ago. And I love watching Riley on this event. She really takes everything to the, like that finishing that full turn on toe. And Emma Sibson, who is in her first year as an assistant coach here, actually was volunteer assistant coach last year for NC State. Oh, and you know, it looked like she was really, she was pretty under-rotated on that layout step out, that second element. Nice extension through those leaps. You can see what I'm talking about, about her work. She's just got really great extension through all of her elements. A nice aerial to be jump there. I love that show of flexibility. She gears up, she does that gainer. Nice recovery. This is not the rotation that Carolina wanted, however. And as we look again here at that series, again, this is a really common series in NCAA gymnastics. Layout, step out. Yeah, her, you know, her chest was really far down. You can see she didn't get that back leg on the beam. So now as we transition to floor exercise, we talked about how the Phillips twins go from back to back. Well, now it's Paris Phillips, who is the 2017 EAGL floor champion. And you know what? I'm pretty sure they have the same tumbling passes. So we'll see if she goes. I know she's capable of doing that double front. We'll see, uh, the Arabian double front. We'll see if she does that here. Really nice landing there. Same routine. It was yeah, pretty they, dang close. <laughs> yeah, they they had the exact same tumbling passes. So you know, I guess growing up together, training together, do the same passes. She also does that really difficult Arabian double front. Has much better landing though. Look at that. She knew exactly. So difficult because it's a blind landing. You don't see the ground before you hit it. But she knew exactly where she was in the air. Really strong routine for NC State. So now sixth up for the Tar Heels is senior Jamie DeChico out of Fayetteville, Georgia. Has mostly competed on balance beam so far this season for the Tar Heels. And she's starting with one of her harder elements, this back handspring layout. Nice. And you know that secure landing shows me that she is working through this routine with confidence. You talk about academics, uh, Jamie actually was inducted into Phi Beta Kappa, the National Honor Society this fall, big honor. And that split half, really nicely done in combination. I really enjoy seeing Jamie on balance beam because she does have, you see the, she does the down on the beam work. She has unusual elements in her routine. gearing up here for one of them, that pike jump. Really excellent work from her. She didn't see a lot of um, ac 
action in the lineups earlier in her career, but has been doing a great job in her senior season. Wow, that is the best routine I think I've ever seen her do and in a pressure situation. Great to see. Off the top here, look at this. Back handspring, layout, step out, right on, no question. And you know, several gymnasts from Carolina doing this gainer, and she knew exactly where she was, managed to hone in on that landing. Good to see. Good recovery for Carolina, as now it will be Drew Grantham performing on floor exercise. She was first team all EAGL on floor last year. She's capable of doing a full in, and you can see that because that double back is very easy for her. that in later in the season, don't necessarily have to do all the difficulty. She already starts from a 10.0. Nice double pike there. Maybe just a little bit of extra uh, power that'll incur a small deduction, but really strong last routine for NC State. We do have one exhibition performance on beam. It is from Rain Gordon, junior out of uh, La Canada, California. Exhibition routines are really important for the gymnasts because not only does it give them a chance to get their routines out there, but also in a situation where, you know, Carolina didn't have the best beam rotation. They had three falls in the lineup. This might be a place where if she can hit this routine, she can earn herself a spot in the lineup uh, in the coming weeks. Just a little bit difficult connection there. She does that aerial to the back tuck, but was slow in connecting that. So if the judges determine that she did not connect those elements, she will incur a deduction. And as we said earlier, it looks like they have five capable gymnasts. They're just trying to find that six to really hone it in. Yeah, you know, and I think this is, they have had two really uh, solid beats. You know, part of me wonders, it's the middle of the season can be really tricky. You know, you've gotten your routines out there, you're excited. Now this is, you know, this is the third meet. Sometimes I think there can be a little bit of a meet mid symbol, but Rain's working through this routine really well. And another one of those gymnasts that has that double stag. Good positions there. Just a couple of hesitations from her throughout this. Again, this is a new thing in NCAA. This season, having the pause deduction. So, and as you see, she's hanging on that. Good to see her fight for that stick. Good routine. Just a couple of places she needs to clean up in terms of maintaining that rhythm. So with Carolina having to take two falls, NC State has now vaulted up by more than half a point lead. But Carolina will now go to floor on the other side of this break on ESPN3. Through three rotations here, and what a swing it's been. NC State was a full point down. Now they're half a point ahead as Carolina will move to floor exercise, and the Wolfpack will move to the balance beam. Brian Ware along with Christina Chauvenet here. And Christina, floor exercise is where uh, Caroline will look to really recover from the falls that they had to take. Yeah, you know, tough to see this in the Carolina lineup. They have had strong performances on beam. Their other two meets in the season. Um, 
getting a look here at Grace Donnie in that lead spot, just really far off center. And Lily Dean, again, struggling with a couple falls. And then Riley Dewers, who had that really nice, just way under-rotated on that back handspring layout step out. So they will have to count two of those falls. Meanwhile, NC State did pretty well in floor exercise, specifically on the back end. The Phillips twins getting good scores. Drew Grantham setting a season best, 9.875, just a quarter of a uh, quarter, yeah. Just really close from her career from her high. Career high, yeah. And it was, you know, NC State, they did have some adversity in some of their landings, but they fought for those landings that did not fall at all. Would have been really easy for some of those under rotated passes to, um, to have taken falls, but they didn't. So great fight from them and good performance level. So we'll step aside as we get set for the fourth rotation here at Carmichael Arena between the Tar Heels and the Wolfpack here on ESPN3. Just moments away from the beginning of the fourth rotation, the final rotation here at Carmelike Arena between North Carolina and NC State. State leads by .525 points. But Kaja Hislop for North Carolina, she has performed really well today, tying her career best on vault and also doing really well on the beam. But as you get a look at some of the highlights that she did earlier today, yeah, and you know, she's, she's obviously a fan favorite here. We're seeing her aerial to back handspring there. She's such a smooth beam worker. And like there, even though she's a little bit off, she can always pull it off, missed her back foot on that dismount. And this was the highlight of her performance so far for me. Oh, so far for me, that um, uh, full twist, full twisting your Chanko. That's the best I've seen her do it. And it, it was her career high. But we may, if you said best so far, this might be best yet to come because Kaja Hislop was an All-American on floor exercise. As you get a look at the uh, quick lineup there with Robinson starting things off. You also mentioned Lily Dean, Hislop in that five spot, and also Madison Hargrave. And Madison Hargrave has, as I mentioned, one of the most improved gymnasts on this team. She's really been bringing it this season. Great floor performance. Uh, you know, this is really the Tar Heels event. Um, and Kaja is, as you mentioned, returning All-American, has is so great to watch on this event. And the lineup is stacked from top to bottom. NC State, on the other hand, they really struggled last week on beam, having to count a couple of falls themselves. So um, this is going to be a really important uh, rotation for NC State to get some of that confidence back on the balance beam. Yeah, and you see the lineup there. Aaliyah Harrison, the freshman, will start things off. Drew Grantham will be at the back. You mentioned their score last week had a score of 47.775 uh, on the balance beam. They did have to take a fall, but again, not a lot of, it also was elements of not just a lot of confidence that's, in those uh, in those performances. That's right, and that's one of the places where on beam, not being confident can really show through because uh, you don't have the margin of error that you do, say, on floor. So you really have to, uh, you really have to be aggressive on the balance beam, and that can be really tricky. And you just saw NC State head coach Kim Landris just a moment ago talking to her young freshman, Aaliyah Harrison, out of Raleigh, North Carolina. And really nice back handspring layout step out there to start the routine. And I had a chance to talk to um, the coaching staff before the meet, and Kim told me that, you know, they didn't do, they just wanted to continue their training as normal. She said she's not a reactive coach. She just likes to make sure that the athletes are confident in themselves and that she's confident that they are going to hit their routines. Oh, and just a little bit of a balance error there on the full turn. And slow connection, nice front toss. But slow connection into that, another one of those areas where you may re she may incur a rhythm deduction. And nice dismount there, good recovery. You know, a couple of places in there where she was a little bit hesitant, probably some of those nerves starting out of the rotation, but she did get uh, stayed off to a good start. This was the highlight of the routine for me. Really nice height in that back handspring layout step out. and. Good dismount, maybe just a little bit of a pike down on that gainer, but solid start for NC State. Meanwhile, starting things off for Carolina is Michaela Robinson. And we mentioned just a moment ago how North Carolina has coming in 
with the eighth best floor exercise routine as a team. That's right, and they are, they're so powerful, but also want to pay attention to their dance. They pay so much attention to that in the gym, making sure they're hitting those 180 degree splits in their leap elements. Double pike here to start. And she just gets so much power on that. Great job of covering it. This double pike is so high. Look at that. Our camera angle can't even quite get it. Um, she's so huge. Really good extension. Look at that all the way through and drops it to the ground. She set the table up really well for Carolina. And I have to really commend her both on vault and floor. She showed a lot of improved control on her landings. Yeah, we said she set a personal best on vault earlier today to get a look at Lauren Kent, who is second up for the Wolfpack. And there's that popular handspring layout step out. And there's her dance series. And I love this down on the beam work. Just adds a little bit of extra artistry to it. Kent trying to build some confidence here as she is. I love that combination. Pike jump to the layout step out. You don't see that in NCAA very often. Big boost for the Wolfpack there here. You, go. you know, she was. Her cartwheel on that dismount was a little bit slow. I was worried she was going to have trouble getting the rotation around, but no problem. Lo I really enjoyed her choreography and the diversity of elements. As you see here, she might have been a little bit shy of that 180-degree split on um, the first leap, but does that nice down-on-the-beam work. Michaela Robinson just a moment ago getting her season best, 9.825. And now Megan Ruzicka is second up for the Tar Heels. Oh, and did a good job to save that. She was under rotated on the double back. Rotation on the third element last week. 
fights through it. You know, she's. I think she's still working on her endurance throughout that floor routine, but um, really good performance throughout. And we're going to get a look at this double back. She just doesn't get the height. You can see her chest is pretty far down on landing. But again, I think she did gr a great job not to put her hands down. And here's that whip half to the full. And she did a good job of saving that. Looks like she just stumbled a little bit there uh, on that landing. So now up for NC State on the balance beam is Casey Nelson, a sophomore out of Marietta, Georgia, and as a freshman last year, mostly competed on beam and on floor, set a season best last year of 9.825. And I love that series, the aerial to layout step out. Sometimes you often see aerial back handspring. Her season best so far is 9.7 in the meet against Ohio State. And NC State has had one more meet than Carolina, so they haven't had their bye week yet. Carolina had that bye week in the first week. So this is NC State's fourth meet. It's Carolina's third. Oh, and nice save there on that side, Summy. and all of the Wolfpack gymnasts choreographed the Wolfpack sign into their routines. Little bit of form issues on that dismount, but she really honed in on the, on the landing. So there you see the sophomore Casey Nelson surrounded by her teammates, and as you mentioned, fighting through this series. Yeah, and you know, you can see her center of gravity was pretty far off on that, but she managed to save it. Just a little bit of bent legs here, but she managed to hone in on that stick. So third up for North Carolina will be Jamie Antonori, who has fought her way into the lineup, the junior out of Park City, Utah. As we mentioned last year, you know, the Tar Heels last year, they were sixth in the country in terms of floor size. That's because they had great routines from Morgan Lane, from Caitlin Hedlund, from Madison Nettles. That's right, yeah. So, you know, when you think talk about like Morgan Lane, and uh, Madison Nettles are putting up 9.8, plus every single week. And so that's difficult to replace. Um, but Jamie is such, has shown such improvement over her time here. Got her career high last week with a 9.775. And it looks like there's the judging conference going on right now. And that those can happen when judges disagree, for example, if a gymnast connected an element. We're here to let you know that the ACC Network is coming on August 2019. 15 schools all on one network, a new place to call home. Can't believe that is coming just around the corner as it looks like the judges have now gotten their score in for Megan Ruzicka. And obviously for the Tar Heels perspective, that will probably be the one they want to drop as Antonori is ready to take her moments. And you see, saw that judges conference, and that's because pre-match, but all the judges are given the routines that the gymnasts will perform. Well, they 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 aren't necessarily given the exact routines they're going to perform, but they do have a list of what elements the gymnasts need to hit in order to start from that um, 10.0. So that's likely what the conference is: is whether she met all of the criteria to get that 10.0 start. And the score's coming in for her 9.575, so that is a score that they would like to drop.
double back as her last pass there. Not quite as crisp as she was last week, but a, a good recovery routine for Carolina. As we take a look here at that double pike, really nice form in the air. She is one of the taller gymnasts. She's 5'8", and is just like, get, gets so much height on these passes. Good double backed, and again, I think she might have been just a little bit short, but it did a good job of covering. So now fourth up for NC State is the senior, Caitlin Fullard. We mentioned she is one of NC State's all around performers and is in good position to win it over her teammate, Drew Grantham. As you saw earlier, Grantham did not have her best on the uneven bars. And a little bit of a stumble, but solid recovery. Not a major deduction, but it's still a significant one. Yeah, and you know, that's a, it was a really good fight. She was under-rotated on that, and those are difficult to save. And even though NC State has really fought through, they've saved, you know, so, some of those aerial elements. Yeah, and you know, that doesn't, I, I'm sure that they're not going to be entirely happy with their performance because you do want to pick up some of those tents that these athletes know there's places they can do better on, but I am sure that they are happy to see them fight through it into that front toss. Again, just a little bit slow on that connection. And I'm only pointing these uh, deductions out only to explain where the judges get their score from um, because they do take all of these, all of these little deductions add up. But really overall, nice rotation from NC State. And the team has really performed well. Aaliyah Harrison started with a 9-7. Uh, Casey no. Yeah, Casey Nelson, the 9.75 just a moment ago, and this should be in the same range. That's right. And, you know, look, she was really pretty far under-rotated. Brings that leg forward to save it. This was the highlight of the routine for me. Got a lot of power on that. Stuck dismount. They've done a really good job of maintaining that momentum and coming back really strong from a not great beam performance last week. So now Lily Dean is up for Carolina on floor exercise, obviously looking to get that balance, balance beam routine out of her mind as she's ready to take the floor with her first pass. All right, Jim Jernette, this, this is Gresham's legs. This is what you've been waiting for. Run through into that double back. And you know, she even has some additional power. Not a lot of athletes can do a front through to a double back and have to take a big leap back big punch back like that. Layout. She does a front tuck instead. Gearing up for her final pass here. Nice double pike. And, you know, good recovery. You know, I got to say, this is really uncharacteristic for Carolina. You have to wonder if that beam rotation kind of got to them a little bit. This opening was great. Into that double back. She needs to, that is one of those places she will get a deduction um, for a little bit of extra power. But this was supposed to be laid out. Looked like she didn't quite get enough rotation, had to tuck it. So now next up, fifth up for the Wolfpack on beam is Nicole Webb. And you just saw the score a moment ago. Caitlin Fullard with a 9.8. Webb is actually a transfer from Florida. She's originally a local girl out of Morrisville, North Carolina, decided to come back home. Yeah, and she is really great to watch on this event, has great lines. She competed in one meet, and it was the meet against the Georgia Bulldogs at home. In her freshman season. At in her Georgia. freshman yes. season, yes. She's gearing up here for her handspring layout step out. Really solid. And maybe just a little bit shy of that 180 degrees. She's 
she's keeping good momentum through this routine, though. And again, I mean, I'm really impressed with the grit of these NC State athletes because some of those elements, like her aerial was a little bit under-rotated, uh, but she really uh, held on to it and covered it up well so that she wouldn't get as big of a deduction as she would have if she'd taken a bigger correction. And gearing up for her dismount here. Nice double twist. Just a slight adjustment on that landing, but she's a beautiful beam worker. Great to see her uh, get action in this beam lineup. Back handspring, layout step out, and was just right on. And then this double twist, first one we've seen tonight actually, and just one tiny step, but really solid routine. NC State has performed really well on the beam, and we may see one of the biggest performances coming up now, Kaja Hislop, who broke through the OU floor lineup to get tied for second with a 9-9-2-5 last week. And this is Ka and here we're seeing Brush and Legs part two with Kaja. And this first pass is critical. She does a front layout to Rudy. Wow, that's the best I've seen her control it so far this season. Great stretch through there. Just, this is this is what I'm talking about. I mean, I, it's a good performance, don't get me wrong. Um, but look at this. This is one of the highlights of the routines. Look at the stretch in those splits. That is 180 degrees, folks. If I had a protractor, I would show you. Um, but, you know, just this double back, she does it so well. Great technique, just a little bit of extra power, and you never see her do that. I think that Caroline is just rattled from their performance on the balance beam. Meanwhile, NC State is flying on beam. They've improved every performer. And just a moment ago, Nicole Webb with a personal best, 9875. As you see, Drew Grantham, sixth up for the Wolfpack on beam. And she's also one of those local athletes out of Durham, North Carolina. Really nice series there. And I have to say, I really like the NC State leotards, too. Don't think I've commented on those yet. Um, just a little bit of hesitation on that full turn. I know a lot of college gymnasts wish that they would take the full turn out as a requirement. And nice side summy. And she's showing really nice rhythm through this routine. She's really recovered well ever since her first performance on bar. She That's did well on vault. She did well on floor. That's 9875, and this could be a, the cherry on top. That's right. And didn't quite get that stick, but really strong performance for NC State. They're going to be so pleased with that, and they're probably going to go over a 49. Good stretch through there on her straddle. And this is that dismount, one and a half. Tricky because of that blind landing, just the smallest of hops. That'll probably be a half a 10. Yeah, the lowest score was a 9-7 from Aaliyah Harrison. And she was first up. And I mean, that, sh that um, tells me a lot about where the team is in terms of their ability to come. It can be really hard when you have a rough rotation the next week to go and knock it out of the park. And that is what they have done. Now you got Madison Hargrave, the senior from Indiana, sixth up for Carolina. Nice opening pass there. That's Carolina's only E-rated pass. And she's 
struggled with this pass a little bit last week. Much better. And she told me this is the part of the routine where she wants the crowd to get into it. That double pike, she struggled a little bit with the landing. You could tell she was excited about that when she landed. One and a half into that front layout. Maybe it lacked a little bit of lift in that front layout, but really strong recovery for Carolina in that anchor spot. We do have an exhibition performance coming from Maggie Tamburo. Senior out of Pennsylvania. And that's one of those places she was really under rotated. So when you're under rotated on floor, for example, you can take a step forward and correct that. It becomes a lot more difficult when you're on the beam. Repeats that element. Connecting to that round off, which is really cool. Again, I mean, I just really enjoy when we see things that are outside of the norm and there's variety in the lineup. And that's another place, unusual turn. And she's recovered well since that fall. Wow, this is a really exciting routine. She is, has so many tricks. And you know, she did have that fall in the middle, but this shows a lot of promise. Oh my gosh, I love this routine. So much variety in um, all of her elements. Love that dismount. Um, and we're gonna get a second look at it here. You see a lot of people doing a gainer back. You don't see people doing the front layout like that off the side of the beam. I really hope she can get her consistency in and get in the lineup because even though she had that fall, so many great elements in there and she handled the rest of the routine beautifully. So we do have one more exhibition performance for the Wolfpack on beam. And as you see, it's going to be Kaylin Fullen as she's working with head coach Kim Landris. I got to say, NC State has really come through and put in the work to have their best performance of the year so far. That's right. They are absolutely on track. And I think it says a lot. You know, they have they had such strong scores, even with a couple places in the lineup that can be cleaned up. The potential of this team is really strong, and you can believe that they are looking to defend their EHL title uh, later this year. And, you know, I think NC State and UNC are in very similar uh, positions because they both um, lost a lot of routines last year, both losing around 10 counting routines. That can be difficult because even though some of those other athletes were training the uh, routines, for example, Maggie Tamburo hadn't seen a lot of action in the lineup. So to see some of those returning athletes step up uh, for NC State has been really impressive. So Kaylin Foland is a freshman Another local product out of Morrisville, North Carolina. Competed both at the state and the regional levels at level in level 10 gymnastics. And just saw a little bit of nerves there from her off the top. Ex these exhibition routines, as 
I mentioned earlier, important for the coaches to sort of test the lineup. We are in week four of NCAA gymnastics, so getting to that midseason, um, nice front toss to the back handspring. I love the variety in this uh, beam lineup. Um, and so the, the coaches can test that, and, and these lineups may change as they move through the season. Certainly they have more athletes training. And re oh, really cool uh, dismount off the end there. Um, they have more athletes training than they have spots, so it's important for them to get out there, figure out what is the right mix for the lineup. That front toss into the back handspring, really cool connection. And she connected those really smoothly. And one half, one half just over rotated a little bit, had to take that step, but good routine. So with all four rotations coming through, let's get a quick look at some of the upcoming schedules for these two sides. First for NC State, obviously they played it, faced a couple of Big Ten schools in Michigan State and Ohio State, but now they gotta go down to Baton Rouge and face LSU, which is a big team of its own. You know, we talk about LSU football, New Orleans Saints, LSU football, LSU gymnastics. That's right, and all of those people will bring the football energy to the LSU gymnastics arena. That's gonna be a tough test for NC State. They're gonna be ending on beam just like they did here. So it's gonna be a big confidence booster for them going into that atmosphere. And they will also host the Tar Heels at Reynolds Coliseum uh, in just a couple of weeks. Meanwhile, for North Carolina, as we've said that they've hosted a couple meets here at Carmichael, they'll travel up uh, north to take on Pitt on February 1st, and then they're back here on February 9th, and then the, the senior day will be on February 22nd against New Hampshire, an, an EAGL school that we haven't really seen come down here the last few years. That's right, and you know, I think it's really good for Carolina. They're gonna get a really good sense of where they stand against other teams in their conference, moving towards conference championships. This was not the performance that Carolina wanted, certainly. We saw really strong performances on ball uneven bars, struggled on beam. You know, floor was good, but it wasn't lights out like they usually do. Definitely saw some of, probably just some nerves uh, from beam sneaking onto floor. Here you get a look at the scores for North Carolina on floor. Kaja Hislop did pretty well uh, uh, with the best score at 9.875. Uh, Madison Hargraves also finished strong as well at the end for Carolina. Yeah, and you know, I mean, an athlete like Kaja, she's so used to knocking it out of the park every single time that that's gonna be a disappointing score for her, even though it is a 9.875. And it just shows you how technically excellent she is that she can have a mistake like that. Meanwhile, for NC State on beam, we mentioned how consistent they were. Aaliyah Harrison started at a 9-7, and eventually that was a score that was dropped. Yeah, they did a great job, um, and we're seeing the floor scores here for NC State, um, but they did a great job on floor as well. Really fought through some adversity in that lineup um, and uh, performed the routines really well. So that's gonna, that's gonna give them a lot of confidence moving into going to LSU. So now, uh, obviously with the scores reported in, NC State did really well in the second half of this meet, doing well on floor exercise, getting a score of over 49, and pretty close to a 49 on the balance beam, as you see a score of 195.2. And yeah, North Carolina didn't continue that upward trajectory, but those first two rotations were excellent. Yeah, meanwhile, North Carolina has to take a 194.65, but they'll work hard over the next couple weeks when they're back home. So for our entire crew here at Carmichael Arena and for my broadcast partner, Christina Chauvinet, I'm Brian Ware saying thanks again for watching this EHEL Gymnastics Meet on ESPN3. To watch this meet as well as other matches on our platform of ESPN, networks go to watchespn.com or download the watch espn app nc state takes this dual meet over the north carolina tar heels and you saw it right here on espn3 good night from chapel hill